So here's a look at the edible hedge, food hedge. Some people call it a fedge, but I planted it in the back. I ordered a bunch of shrubs. Some of them didn't come. Some of them I gave or sold to friends. This is what's left. I planted some golden currants, service berries, aronia, um, hazelnut, wild plum, and service berries. Or excuse me, buffalo berries. They all made it so far. They're all alive. Creeping Charlie, a lot of people hate it. It's a member of the mint family, as you can see by the flowers. And thus, the bees love it. So if you're looking for plants to support bee life, um, allowing Creeping Charlie to live in your precious grass is a good idea. Back here is... Uh, Yet another piece of rock landscaping that I had to remove. I need to water again. I just transplanted these yesterday and so they look extremely sad. But I got some wild strawberries and some raspberries from a friend. The wild strawberries have pink flowers. Let's see. cool. I'll also plant some food plants in here. It gets extremely wet back here when it rains. This is a, in kind of a valley and it almost floods. So I'm just going to throw seeds back here and see what it takes until it gets covered. So it's not to be covered with um, weeds like the rest of my lawn. We've got a hazelnut. And this hazelnut, I don't know if it made it or not. I guess we'll find out. And this crazy looking area is sunchokes. So these sunchokes, this fall and this spring, I went through and harvested every single tuber that I could find. Because they say you can harvest, try to harvest every single one and you'll miss some and those will be what you plant for next year. And they are correct. <laughs> a ton came back. Um, my only problem is that the mulch that I used, I don't have um, access to free wood mulch, so I've been using free leaf mulch, and the leaf mulch did not work to hold back the, um, I've got a pea, or a bean, looks like a bean or a snap pea. I planted that last year. Anyway. It looks crazy back here, but it's food. And the sunchokes will eventually get tall and shade out the kids' sandbox. In the meantime, I'll have to figure out what to do with all of this <laughs> grass in between it. Find some more mulch, I guess. And then there's the end of my hedge in a huge dandelion patch. And there's another uh, elderberry shrub over here. And this bad boy survived a while in a pot because I didn't have time to plant it. And now it's just surrounded by rocks because I haven't had time to move the rocks. And this is where I'm storing all of them right now and it's thriving. The, actually the animals ate it so bad this winter. I didn't protect it at all. And it wants to live, look at that. Pick the right things. You don't have to work very hard. And this is a male hardy kiwi. Um, it's uh, Arctic Beauty, so you can see some of the leaves are variegated, and it looks like it's sunburnt, so maybe it's just sunburnt. <laughs> and here is my sole survivor female hardy kiwi. This is a Sai hardy kiwi, and it 
is known to be less vigorous than the other hardy kiwis. It's also bred to be supposedly self-fertile. Doesn't matter because we have a, um, a male anyway. And I've been deciding whether to get um, whether to get another female or not. I want to see how these do. It survived though. It survived the winter. It survived the frosts. And this is a thicket creeper that I wove into my deck. It's like Virginia creeper with one distinction in that the tendrils instead of having like suction cup type things on them like the Virginia creeper they actually have the ability to climb into little cracks and they think that it's done by finding something dark and attaching that way into a tree. So this type of plant cannot climb up a wall like Virginia creeper. <clears throat> but otherwise it looks exactly the same. It has berries just like Virginia creeper. So yeah, it's a weed, but I think it's pretty. <sighs> it's not invasive, so I'm allowing it to grow for now. The intention is for hardy kiwis and possibly grapes to actually grow here eventually instead, but right now I think the deck is kind of ugly and it looks prettier with leaves on it. And here's some of the tomatoes and peppers and stuff I started. I'll be transplanting the tomatoes later in May. Last year I ended up having to cover too many tomatoes. I've transplanted a lot of the stuff I started, so mostly it's just tomatoes and peppers left. A couple of lovage plants and then some other stuff I need to in those egg cartons. I need to transplant those today. So a little update on the containers that I told you about earlier this spring for seed starting. Egg cartons would work if you were starting something that you wanted to transplant in a couple of weeks. They do not work for plants that are going to be in there for a while. And they dry out extremely quickly, especially if they're outside within like a couple hours they dry out. Toilet paper tubes are also not a good idea. They get like this slimy substance to them and the plants are not happy in them. The, uh, the ones that I made out of newspaper seem to be working the best. I really like that. 